Welcome to the History AI Podcast, where the past comes alive with facts, anecdotes, and a dash of humor. Here are your hosts, Chuck and Marco. Hello, history buffs. Welcome back to another episode of the History AI Podcast. I'm Chuck. And I'm Marco. Today, we've got a story that's more than just a slice of history, it's a full blown epic. Absolutely, Marco. We're diving into the life of Yasuke, the African man who became a samurai in feudal Japan. A tale of culture, combat, and courage. But before we unsheathe our katanas, a quick reminder if you enjoy our dives into history, please subscribe, rate, and share our podcast. It really helps us out. Yasuke's early life is shrouded in mystery. Born around 1555, likely in Mozambique, he was a man of African descent. Not much is known about his family, but his journey was about to become legendary. Imagine this towering figure, Yasuke. Some sources say he was over six feet tall, in a time when the average height was much less. Talk about standing out in a crowd. Yeah, he was literally heads above the rest. Now, let's zoom in on Yasuke's exceptional talents and his remarkable journey to Japan. Yasuke was more than just a towering figure. He was a polyglot, fluent in several languages, which was quite rare at the time. This linguistic prowess likely played a key role in his initial recruitment by the Jesuits. Absolutely, Chuck. He was also known for his military acumen. Imagine him, not just a soldier, but a strategist, his mind was as sharp as the edge of a samurai sword. And let's not forget, Yasuke had a presence that commanded respect. His physical strength was evident, but it was his demeanor, calm, collected, yet imposing, that made him stand out. Speaking of standing out, let's talk about his arrival in Japan. It's around 1579, and Japan is in the midst of a tumultuous period, the Sengoku era. Feudal lords, known as daimyos, are locked in power struggles. It's against this backdrop that Yasuke arrives, a figure unlike any Japan had seen before. He arrived with the Italian Jesuit missionary Alessandro Valignano on a mission to inspect the Jesuit missions in Japan. The sight of Yasuke caused such a stir in Kyoto that people reportedly rushed to catch a glimpse of him, causing near riots. And then there's this anecdote, almost too bizarre to be true. People were so taken aback by Yasuke's skin color that they thought it was ink. They literally tried to scrub it off. Yasuke must have been both amused and perplexed by this cultural misunderstanding. It's a moment that underscores the vast cultural differences of the time. But Yasuke, with his resilience and adaptability, quickly transcended these initial curiosities to become a respected figure in Nobunaga's court. Indeed Chuck. His journey from a foreign visitor to a trusted warrior in Nobunaga's service is nothing short of extraordinary. It's a testament to his remarkable talents and the unique circumstances of his life. So, Yasuke is in Japan, a land vastly different from anything he's known. His journey now takes an extraordinary turn. He's about to enter the world of the samurai, something unprecedented for a foreigner, especially of African descent. Right Chuck. Yasuke's first significant encounter in Japan was with Lord Nobunaga Oda, one of the era's most powerful and influential daimyos. Nobunaga was a key figure in the unification of Japan and known for his openness to foreign cultures and technology, which was quite rare at the time. Nobunaga's fascination with Yasuke wasn't just because of his physical appearance. Yasuke was knowledgeable in military tactics, possibly acquired during his time with the Jesuits or even earlier in his life. He was also well-versed in the art of conversation, and with his language skills, he quickly learned Japanese, which impressed Nobunaga. Absolutely. Nobunaga valued Yasuke's intelligence and physical prowess, and he soon took Yasuke into his service. This was a huge deal. Yasuke was granted a residence, a ceremonial katana, and the status of a samurai. This elevation was not just a symbolic gesture, it was a clear sign of Nobunaga's trust and respect for Yasuke. And let's talk about the responsibilities that came with this status. Yasuke wasn't just sitting pretty in Nobunaga's court, he was actively involved in the political and military affairs. He participated in important meetings and was seen at Nobunaga's side during important events. His role in Nobunaga's army was also significant. Yasuke wasn't just a warrior, he was a bodyguard to Nobunaga himself. 
this position was typically reserved for the most trusted and skilled samurai. It speaks volumes about Yasuke's abilities and the trust Nobunaga placed in him. Indeed Marko Yasuke's rise to a samurai is a remarkable story of cultural integration and personal achievement. From a foreign land to the heart of feudal Japan's power dynamics, his life is a testament to the fact that skill, intelligence, and character can transcend boundaries. And let's not forget the broader context here. Yasuke's story occurs during a period of intense social and political upheaval in Japan. His acceptance and rise to prominence highlight the complexities and nuances of Japanese society at the time. Exactly, Marco. His story is not just about individual achievement, it's about the fluid nature of identity and the possibilities of cultural exchange in a rapidly changing world. Yasuke's time in Japan wasn't just about his remarkable transition to samurai status. He was also actively involved in the turbulent and violent era of the Sengoku period participating in several key battles. Exactly Chuck. One of the notable moments in Yasuke's military career was the Battle of Tenmokuzen in 1582. This was the final battle against the Takeda clan, a pivotal moment in Nobunaga's campaign to unify Japan. Yasuke's presence in this battle is significant, as it demonstrates his involvement in critical military engagements. And let's delve into the details of his role. Yasuke was more than just a warrior, he was a valued military asset. His physical strength was unmatched, making him an intimidating presence on the battlefield. But it wasn't just his brawn, his strategic insights were also a key component of his role in Nobunaga's army. His loyalty and prowess were put to the ultimate test during the Hunenji incident. In June 1582, Nobunaga was betrayed by one of his generals, Akechi Mitsuhide. Yasuke was there, at the Hunenji Temple in Kyoto, during this pivotal moment. He fought valiantly to protect Nobunaga, showcasing his commitment and bravery. Tragically, despite Yasuke's efforts, Nobunaga was forced to commit seppuku. Following this, Yasuke joined Nobunaga's son, Nabutada, in a last stand at Nijo Castle. It was a fierce battle, ultimately leading to Nabutada's defeat and death. After the fall of Nijo Castle, Yasuke's fate took a turn. He was captured by Mitsuhide's forces. Given his foreign origin and the fact that he wasn't Japanese, Mitsuhide decided not to kill him but instead sent him to the Jesuit mission in Kyoto. This act marks the end of Yasuke's known military and historical presence in Japan. Yasuke's legacy, however, goes far beyond his military prowess. He's a symbol of the interconnectedness of the world during a time when global travel was arduous and rare. His story breaks the stereotypes of the insular nature of feudal Japan and shows how it was more cosmopolitan than often perceived. Absolutely Chuck. Yasuke's life in Japan challenges our understanding of cultural and racial boundaries during the period. He wasn't just a curiosity or an outsider, he was a respected member of Japanese society and a trusted samurai. His story, though not widely known, is a powerful narrative about the possibilities of cultural integration and mutual respect. It's a reminder that history is full of unexpected and inspiring stories of individuals who transcend their origins to become part of something greater. Yasuke's journey from Africa to Japan, his rise to a samurai, and his involvement in pivotal historical events, all paint a picture of a man who was not just a participant in history, but a shaper of it in his own right. And that, listeners, is the legacy of Yasuke, a man whose life journey defies easy categorization and challenges our perceptions of the past. Thank you for tuning into the History AI podcast. We hope you enjoyed this journey into the life of Yasuke, the African samurai. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and share the podcast. Your support means the world to us. Until next time, keep exploring history and stay curious. This is Chuck and Marco, signing off. From the mind behind the History AI podcast comes an electrifying journey into the past. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Dive into a tale where Benjamin Franklin, America's beloved inventor, takes an unexpected journey through time. But with his leap, he unleashes a powerful ripple. Now, with dark forces lurking in the shadows, harnessing this energy to shatter and enslave the world, it's a race against time. Will Franklin fix the future? Or will history rewrite itself? 
Uncover the secrets. A ripple through time, Franklin's folly. Time has never been more fragile. On Amazon now.